Again, the, first of all, no men ever get to come on the podcast. So not he, anymore. It's been years. It's not a toxic male, so he made it on the podcast because um, well, you're young. And I just saw Barbie. So like, how, how old are you? Thirty. Thirty-two. It's been two years been since two you were thirty. Just insane. <laughs> okay, yeah. first of all, his name is Mark Lafleur. Did I say that right? Yeah. You did. Yeah. He Mark the Flower. Mark the Flower. He is an entrepreneur. He makes the best. Used to make the best meat, but <laughs> built the best meat company. Oh, and I like he makes the best meat. Yeah, I thought He's that was juicy. I like that. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> but cool with that. I was. I'm going to ask you a hard question right off the top. Okay, we'll just dive right Do in. Do you think you're the 30s are different like you being raised as 30 year old now are different than the older people like men do you think men are different like, like then me, like, like a previous away? generation then like a 45 year old mm. man so like today like me as 30 compared to a 45 year old yeah, yeah, yeah. today yeah yeah of course absolutely like, it's like saying the difference between a 30 year old and a 20 year old i think there's so many things that happen between that 10 years no span. i mean if i was to take a 45 year old man okay and put him when you at like 15 years ago, put him at 30. Okay, so like a generation would you, ago, would you have 30 been the same? Different. Are you no, guys different? Very You're the much same. So. No, we're very different. different. Yeah. Well, how do you think? Well, I think the world's a very different place. I think expectations have changed. I think opportunity has changed. I think like what it means to be a man at 30 has changed, you know, all for better or worse across the board. So I think that if you're living in a new environment, being a 30 year old is going to change a lot depending on that. You know what? If that makes sense. Because we've been talking and our boys are coming to like teenagehood. Mm -hmm. And like you're an entrepreneur, so you have to have confidence. Like mm -hmm. bottom line. And I was saying to Nat, I'm like, it's so hard because you don't want to raise a toxic male. Yep. Because they naturally have a confidence that I'm not used to. It's almost like a, it's so weird to watch. Did you see the conversation that's happened recently with like Jenny Mullen? It's after the Barbie thing. And basically it's about like now sort of being afraid to raise young boys um, in this world and how we have to be so careful because whatever. And people, a lot of people took it the wrong way and was like, basically like, um, you know, you're an anti-feminist, like wor worrying about your boys and all of this. And there was a big back and forth, oh. um, ever since the Barbie movie. And a lot of people kind of did think that the Barbie movie was, um, you know, putting down men. Oh, I don't want to squash them, but I also want to raise them aware. I'm like, it's such a hard, it's such a hard balance to, because if a girl does it, you're kind of like, way to go. But when a guy comes with the same force, you're like, sit down. I, it is so hard for me because you had to navigate being a male and then also understanding the world around you. But I'm like, do we don't know how to raise the boys that be, your mom raised you. Yeah. And she obviously did an amazing job. Yeah. But like, how, life. I don't know how we Oh my gosh, that. yeah, I'm having three of them. I'm nervous. I've got like my own thoughts on this. So, okay. you know, the whole thing is, I think everything's an extreme. I think that there was a lot of problems with this idea of toxic masculinity for such a long time. And I think that a lot of things needed to change, but I do see a problem with completely eliminating confidence and masculinity. And I think that that's kind of where it's going right now. And you see what I'm saying by that, right? hundred percent. Okay. So for you, it's kind of like, okay, there is some benefits that come, you know, you're just a male in general. So you maybe are predisposed to having confidence or an ego or being more aggressive. And when that's controlled and you use it in positive ways, it's great. But really, if it's kind of left unchecked and you don't have good role models and you don't have good, you know, idols or whatever, people that you can look up to that um, are using that in a positive way, it can mm -hmm. lead to a lot of bad things, right? And there and I are, think that and, and, and there are a bunch of like, especially now, our son's influence isn't just their dad and their uncle. It's through social media. Yeah. I mean, there's so many men that that. I mean, we know like, like terrible ones that are putting thoughts into their minds. Yeah. Like leaders because no one else is leading. So there's leaders that are just like, I know what's right. And everyone's like, okay, he knows what's right. It's yeah. so weird. It's tough. Like, honestly, I got so much respect for you guys navigating uh, raising kids right now. I honestly, know. like I couldn't Respect's imagine. see how it goes. I think like, look, like the biggest issue is that everything becomes an extreme. So like if you subscribe to any thought, like, hey, you know what? Maybe confidence is good in one way. Well, then you're automatically this like toxic masculine person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, if you're like, hey, you know what? Um, no, 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 you shouldn't have any confidence or you should rein in your confidence or you should be a little bit more um, uh, empathetic. Then it's like, oh, well, you know, you're soft and you're woke and you're this and you're that. And it's like, well, no, I just want to take a little bit of each and make like a, okay, a natural. So we're sitting here talking to like a man who's obviously has 
a lot of confidence, started multiple businesses, two that failed in school and one that was majorly successful and sold for millions and millions of dollars. And um, we met him through that business. But let's just talk about your confidence for a second because we would love our boys to have the confidence to be successful, not necessarily as an entre entrepreneur, but or any of our children in the world and having the, we used to say the balls, but now we like <laughs> to say the vagina, to like actually be strong enough to believe in themselves to go and start something or be good at something. You are an only child raised by a single mother. Where the hell did you get all of that? Where did you get the, is it the word gumption? I don't know, I'm not really good with words, but that the like, because we would love that to yeah. like be able to take a risk. How do you think you got like that? Were you born like that or were you raised like that? Okay, so like that's a, a long, okay. a long question. Well, I'm so here for a long I always, I always like to say, you know, people like to ask, you know, why are you the way you are? And people ask that to a lot of <laughs> it's different so people. True. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, like the way to think about that is you got like a big crock pot. Okay, mm -hmm. and the crock pot is life, and you're gonna sprinkle in all of these different factors. You know, your genetic factors, like what is your personality predisposed to? You're gonna sprinkle in the people that are in your life, your parents, you know, the you know, failures and the wins that you've had in life, and you're gonna kind of put that in the crock pot. It's like different levels of ingredient. And then, you know, you're taking it and stirring it around, and what comes out is really who you are today. So it's not one single thing, it's so many things that kind of have compounded the good and the bad. So I think for me, like early on, um, like my mom, right? Like my mom, I grew up with my mother and, um, you know, she actually gave up her job to raise me. You know, I was a single child on my mom's side. Um, and she just believed in me no matter what. And we didn't have a whole lot. Like she gave me everything she could, but we didn't have a whole lot, but she not to be nosy, but did your dad, did you, did you visit with your dad? Did you oh yeah, for sure. No, no. It, he was in the picture completely. Okay. It's just, they were separated. Okay. So yeah. So, um, so yeah, so essentially, and he played a huge role also because like me and my dad had a rocky relationship early on and it was very much like anything he would tell me to do, I would do the opposite. And I struggled a lot in high school, like a lot, like I failed out pretty much grade nine and 10. And Why? um I just hated school. I didn't see the point to it. Like, were there was you no... too clever that you were bored or did you not like what they were teaching? What was the reason that you were bored in school? I don't like, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I think the biggest thing was I didn't care what was being taught. I just wanted to play video games. Like that was oh, my life. Oh. And I had this huge thing with authority. So if you told me to do something, it was kind of like, fuck you. Like I did oh, not want to do it. Your so. mom must have then you, didn't you fucking homeschool you then? So, so I was homeschooled as well. So get this. So I was homeschooled up until grade eight. Why? And then I went back because I was struggling in school okay. a lot. Can I ask so you a question? I, for sure. When you were like, fuck you, yeah. was your mom like, that's a strong personality. I want to support mm -hmm. that. Or was she like, what the fuck are you doing? Please mom, mom just, just always get it together. Back. My mom always had my back. So she so, was like, you know what's yeah. right for you. She would, even if I did do something wrong, she would, for the most part, either be neutral or tell off whoever was dealing with me. But even then, if you but did then, wrong. but then she would give it to me okay, privately okay. after the huh. fact, which I respect a lot, right? You know, it's kind of like the whole point of family. It's, you know, have your back. And I think what that taught me early on, like the biggest thing with her was that I'm responsible for all my own actions. So she'll let me do whatever I want. But like, listen, if I get myself into some serious trouble, it's like, yo, you did that. And I think that, at an early age, like when you live that way, you learn a lot quicker. And I think that a lot of people, I'm not a parent, so I'm like, I'm just talking you, shit, you, right? You, so you live childhood, you, you know, we say we're not parents, but you had, you had one. Yeah. And, I mean, we are parents, but you're not, but I think that it's such a unique, you have an advantage because you can remember what your parent was like, where mm -hmm. for us, we're so in it. It's so hard to remember what it was like. Mm -hmm. Like you can, it's like yeah. when you become a parent, you don't remember what it was like, like to be. But we sure. very well, much also, remember being your, a child to our parents. Yeah. Your perspective changes so much. Like even you talking about, you know, 20 year olds and 30 year olds back in the day, like even now, like some of the thoughts that I have compared to when I was 25 are just so different. So I can imagine once you have kids, like you are even more far removed from what it was like to be a kid because now you have the responsibility mm -hmm. and you're trying to be this, you know, yeah. model. But one thing I can always say is like, I do like talking about my childhood a lot because most people would look at my childhood as like a failure, like complete, total, like train wreck. Yeah. Like I was never going to make it. Mm -hmm. I was the absolute like demon child and everything worked out real well for us. And your so, mom was never like during those times, like just broke down. It's like, oh my, like this is a lost cause. Like what, like what am I going to do with she him? She definitely did for sure. Okay. You there know, was moments. There was definitely moments. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, I was, uh, I was a lot to handle and she was doing it alone. Um, but once again, it was never a situation. There was never like a question, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it was always, she did everything she could for me. And once again, I think that you talk about confidence, you know, I, I, whether some, when you know that someone just has your back, you know, hmm. and I even actually, I put it in the book. And one of the things I said is like, you know, my same thing, my mom loved me so much and 
she instilled so much confidence in me that I felt like I could never fail. Mm. And that was even with just like not having a lot of money and struggling out in school and having all these problems, you know, it's just like that made such a huge difference in my life. And I think that wasn't the single factor, but that led to some things, let's say early on in high school or university that then, oh, okay, well, this initial confidence gave me confidence to try these things. Those things went well. Oh, great. Now you're stacking these sort of wins that you have and it takes you to the next level of confidence, right? We say sometimes like, um, we're able to take risks because we have had, like, we were a lot like you in high school. We have had so many times where we, that, um, we're not afraid to fail because we've experienced failure so many times. And we think with our kids, like, you know, we're married to our husbands. We live in like a like cushy life. We're like, we want to make sure that our kids experience some sort of like discomfort or failure. Yes, I do. Yes, or, I do. So that they can build some of the resilience like that we have because we don't want the first time them to fail is when like, you know, they're at university or they're doing their first job because that would be so it's like, crippling. It would be crippling. Yeah. Whereas you, you failed in business like big time twice yeah. and you tried again. And it's different. Right? It, it's so crazy because even now, like I have a different, level, like a different type of confidence after coming out the pipe with that. Right. So it's kind of like, okay, you know, once you go through a tough, you know, like tough childhood, once again, it was never, I always, you know, people always want to talk to me about like, what it was like to be a founder at, you know, whatever mm -hmm. age. And I'm like, listen, like my struggles were very minimal compared to what's actually going on out there, you know, mm -hmm, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, but you do get a different type of confidence when you go through that kind of life, do things differently the whole way through and then, you know, sell a company for 17 million bucks, right? Like, 17 a million a bucks. Thing. And I but, know you wanted to sell before. Sorry, like Lisa's says bucks. Like, yeah. The concept of top of I like that was like pretty tame weirdness. Yeah, oh god, totally yeah. tame weirdness. Technical um, malfunction? That's technical totally malfunction. So, but, and didn't you sell your company? You wanted to sell before you were 30. Yeah. But it, I was three weeks late. Three weeks late. I was real but you know what? About that. That's the universe being like, okay, you know what? You're 30. <laughs> okay, sit yes, your ass yes. down. <laughs> and I'm going to give you three weeks later. You have a lot to do still. So you're going to get this at you three know. weeks. Next goal you can have. This one, yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. I believe that a lot. Like, I'm a huge believer the universe is always sending me signs. And once again, you know, I feel like my whole life, when you look back, it's. It's hard to realize it in the moment, but when you look back, you see like, oh, if that horrible thing didn't happen, then I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Which was, but you know, some people look at that like, I am the way I am and I, I have so much of this trauma and I can't move forward because of those things that happened to me. It's like two different mindsets, but it's really hard to turn it around like you just said and say, I am where I am because I was able to like survive through that. You mm -hmm. must, like, you have a lot of conversations with people, you see that sometimes, people, For sure. they let those things crush them. Did you play sports? I did, yeah. What did you play? Football. I played football, played lacrosse. My, when I was a kid, my mom, so once again, we didn't have a whole lot, but my mom would put me into everything she could. So and I did like, soccer, swimming. How long did you play football for? I played football in university. That's, that's a very important thing, because you were homeschooled. Yeah. And but you had team. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? I think grade nine and 10 when I was really struggling was that weird, like I'm a homeschooled kid and I don't know how to mm -hmm. operate socially, you know, so that was causing tons of problems. And then, you know, you figured out after two years and yeah. then team sports, of course, like you learn you real quick. You had a crew always. Yeah. I, it's so interesting because even if you don't fit in, if you have a common goal, it's like you have something that you can do together. Like it's you outside of you. Yeah. So it's it, not just you. Do for you know sure. What I mean? Of course. Absolutely. Like being part of something bigger and then also having to pull your weight, but also like being humble because you can come into a sports team and you have to earn respect. Yeah. You don't get to just walk yeah. in. It doesn't matter who you are. You don't get to just walk in and be hot shot. Like you might have a reputation. You might have whatever is being good. But when you get out there, if you don't perform, you're going to get knocked down real quick. Have you watched the quarterback series? I haven't, but I see it on Oh Netflix. my God. You yeah. have to watch no, it I, I, as an entrepreneur because each, they follow three quarterbacks. Teddy's been watching it now that he has a TV. And each one um, it has like such a different practice, different way of ideology, different things they do, different executions, but they're all super successful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's I love just, that. that's I've, the lesson in it is watching like you're a successful entrepreneur, someone else could do it totally, totally differently different. and a different background, and but you're still su successful. Well, any, anybody can do it. And to yeah. your point, you know, I absolutely respect and I understand, you know, people that have had horrible things happen in their life, and mm -hmm. it's hard to move past yeah, that. Yeah. You know, it's definitely not to say that it's easy. Um, but if you have the mentality that like these horrible things have happened to you and what, woe is me, like you just literally will never get out mm -hmm. of it. You literally cannot because like mm -hmm. you don't believe you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to, you know, like, you know, life's crazy. Right. But I think that you also talk to some people who've had really, really bad things happen and they've turned that into, I wouldn't say, you know, uh, like a weapon or something like that, but they've learned from it, taken what 
little positive could have come out of it and there's such better people for it but um, it's hard to, it's to do hard i'll never forget like as like when we were young we watched oprah every single day <laughs> and every time they would but have so no, no, not relevant at all to like our our no, lives at all we it, were like it was the only thing on at four o'clock i know and we were so into it and um my mom loved oprah yes yes and I remember every time they had someone on that was like super, super successful, every time she would talk to them, it's like they all had this crazy story or people didn't believe in them or they tried, they got down to nothing or their, their life was like so, I mean like Oprah too. And I'm like, there's just, I mean, there's, there's always seems to be, it's, Unless you've oh, you just get everything handed to you, and maybe you're like it's a succession from like your family, but the, but like, then you'll still face something that'll just blow you up at some point. It might yeah. just be at your forty, which is mm -hmm. weird. But on the thing with like you know kids and, mm -hmm. and grown ups, so here's my thought process on that. And like I think kids need to deal with a lot of stuff early on, personally. Okay. Once again, I'm not a parent, so I'm probably how the them. hell are we gonna give them these things, so, these challenges, Mark? Just like dump them in the forest ah, for a couple ah, of days. See what happens. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's called camp, and it's very cushy. I want to let you know it's a big thing exactly. in Ontario. See, they're safe. They're, yeah, like, they should be like, you know what? I'm gonna chill on my phone. Someone's gonna come and save me. Totally. Yeah. They're like, I'll but, just put my GPS on, and someone will find me. And we're so much more like we're giving them so, so much more of like a protected cushy life than we had. You know, like our parents really did let us figure it out. You I, know? I yeah. kind of disagree. I I, do, I I have a lot of new perspectives on it because I think that what you teach them are through your narratives of what when they go through something. It's what you tell them they're experiencing in order for them to, do you know what I'm saying? Like right now, so my daughter had, a, she just hit her head. Yeah, right? so how's she doing? I, mean, it's a, I was at treatment for three hours. Yeah. Okay, like she could be. It's helping though? Oh, massively, but she could be kind of, like we had to cancel, can't, like everything. Can't yeah, to yeah, cancel it's everything. serious. But what I keep saying to her is like, I'm like, number one, like, wow, you're so strong that you could, like, you, like, you're so strong you can do this. And you know, the narrative I keep feeding to her, I'm like, wow, the universe must have not wanted you to be somewhat, kind of woo-woo, but I feel like that keeps her mentality not, she's never said like, poor me, mm -hmm. why me? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, it's just like, I'm gonna do, I'm one foot, and that's kind of her personality too, but I do feel like as parents, they, it's like when they're struggling with a teacher, do you step in and make it right for them or do you teach them how to go make it right for themselves, right? Yeah. Like, I don't think they have to have massive um, upheaval in order to be successful. I think they just have to learn how to deal with massive upheaval in for order sure. to be successful. And I think like when you look at kids that came from money or kids that didn't, like mm -hmm. my thought was always this, like if you come from no money um, and you feel like you can do more, like mm -hmm. a lot of kids do, right? Like a lot of kids that, you know, most people would look at and they're like, oh, this kid's lazy or dumb or can't pull it off or whatever. It's like the kid's actually quite smart. It doesn't care what, you know, you want them to do. Yeah, so right. the thought process is always that, you know, for me, um, kids that didn't come from a whole lot, they just want an opportunity to show people what they're capable of. But when you don't come from a whole lot, those opportunities are very few and far between. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what ends up the happening is smaller. they are. So what happens is when you get that opportunity as someone who didn't come from anything, you give it your all because you don't even know if there's going to ever be another shot. Huh. Whereas when you come from money or if you come from a lot of opportunity, the, the you're inundated big. with opportunity. So it becomes work. You're like, ah, I could really try here, but it's okay. I'll do it next week when this other opportunity comes up. Mm -hmm. And I think that it boils back down to the mindset more than anything else. So like if you've always had opportunities shoved in your face, you're going to be lazy because you're always going to assume if you, you know, fuck this one up, Tomorrow. you're on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I think it's really important, you know, for there to be these moments in kids' lives where it's like, this is your one shot. Mm -hmm. And like, you got to make it happen. And like, it's this is like where you got to dig deep. Sports, it is right? for sure. Like when you have to go try out for a team and you don't like, you don't know, you don't know the coach and you don't know, exactly. you can't buy your way onto the team. Well, that's, and that's the whole thing with this like toxic masculinity and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, you know, it gets, it gets a little scary when, you know, we live in this world where it's like, you know, being tough, um, or, you know, dealing with hardships or having confidence is considered bad across the board mm -hmm. because now, you know, you, you can't have success without having a certain level of confidence. Right? Yeah. So yeah. if we kind of like zap all of that mm -hmm. out, then it's tough. You know, it's, you're, you're oh. people that are like, okay, well, you know what? No, go ahead and take my spot. You right. know, like, you know, sh you know, you deserve this job more and it's like, okay, you know, it's going to be a tough, well, a tough way to do And things. also I'm thinking about like being a boss, like you have to, you've got, you had women that work for you and men, but you also have to like, you don't want to, to come across in a way that they're going to be like this asshole boss. Like, that would be scary too, to have all these, when I'm thinking, when we're thinking about our boys, to have all these employees and to be able to treat them in a way that they want to be treated, treated, but literally you're an entrepreneur and you're figuring it out as you go. You haven't, you haven't gone to like school to learn how to do this. Yeah. How did you handle all that? Yeah. Like, look, you know, when you haven't, when you're 
constantly surrounded by pressure. Like the, the beautiful thing about True Local and, and kind of circling back to everything is that I wasn't sure if I could say it. That's why I was like the meat company. Cause I'm oh like, yeah, True Local for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know how that goes. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Yeah, no, I still have a lot of friends that work there. You know, the I new CEO that. I'm really close with. So, mm. um, yeah, look like True Local was that perfect. Um, it was always bigger and harder than what we were capable of, but it wasn't impossible. So we had to learn every day. So, but every day, if we learn, if we pushed ourselves, we could learn the problems that we needed to solve in that day. So that was like every single day. And you know, what ends up happening is I didn't really know how to run a business. But if I didn't figure it out real quick, there wouldn't have been one. So we went all in on it, right? Like that was it's like our life now is dramatically different than what it was when we were building True Local. So it was like a do or die, you know, it was pass only or fail. Five years. It was five I know years. It was crazy five years. Yeah. But like that's wild. It, yeah, it's crazy looking back on it more now. I feel like I didn't really appreciate what we did when it was happening. You I'm very you much, it. You yeah, I'm very much a destination person. And I'm trying to change that. That's the beauty of being young too. Yeah, right? yeah, I like think it's so. kind of. I, I do, I do think that because the risk is lower it, than if you have three children at home yeah. and a house. Yeah, and, it's tough. And yeah. a wife. I know. I know you're married now, but like the expectation of For sure. they, like you know the expectation is very different the older you get mm -hmm. and the stakes get higher because if it doesn't go well, you're kind of like it's you're life. not just fucking yourself. Exactly. You're, it's everybody around you. And, and yeah. yeah, no, you, yeah, I, I just think of that. I'm like, that's the beauty. That mm -hmm. is the beauty of being 25. Yeah, and you know what? There are a lot of amazing um, women moms that are killing it in business. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Joanna from Nick's Wear oh, you know, is God. amazing. And she started young, too, though. Yes, yeah. yeah. Did she have a kid when she? Nope. No, she mm -hmm. didn't, huh? Okay, nope. interesting. We actually met her right out, like, right when she was raising started. the money. Good, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't she? She was raising pregnant, wasn't she? Nope. No, that the was first okay. time. She was just, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if she was She was trying to get the bay. I think she got to the I bay. I gotcha, and like, okay. Yeah, like, we had our launch party for our first company, and she was like, can I come? 11 years ago. Can I come and set up in, you know, it was in our, my house. Can, yeah. you, can I come set up in my house and because I'm raising money and then everyone will get like a pair of underwear and we were like, yeah. Yeah, sweet. So out. she had like a, she had like a, like a pop-up in our <laughs> launch party. To get yeah, that's awesome. I didn't realize addresses. that. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. You know, on the point that you were talking about with like the employees and stuff, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter in my opinion, what you teach somebody, because what'll end up happening is if they have a bad personality, bad management style, bad attitude, if there's, you know, if they're toxic or they're, you know, just not a good leader, they're going to realize real quick because people won't stick around. It's kind of like a lot of these mm -hmm. things in life are, are kind of, especially not, now I feel like, Oh, I feel now like, I couldn't like, imagine. That was crazy. Like, Peace out. I don't need this shit. Now it's while we'll it work. Must be right. Nobody ever really says that. Yeah. Like, okay, good. I know. <laughs> or we don't, we don't follow up. They're just cashing in and we're like, what do you do? Literally we send out emails. What do you do exactly? <laughs> Literally. Anyways, that's a different story for it's a different It's a whole day. different game now. Like I, it's tough. Like starting a company today where it's like people don't really want to work or they feel like, I, I think there's a lot of entitlement for sure going around I, out there. I've heard this a lot. Yeah. Like, and I, and I can't, I don't know if our children, it's going to be different, but a lot of like, um, you know, bosses are like, nobody wants to come to work anymore. Yeah. Nobody wants to do anything extra. Yeah. They want to clock out mm -hmm. and that's it. I, I also, okay. The only, the, the social worker in me is on, the only reason I say this is, is because when you see a company making so much money and you're doing minimum wage mm. or like a very low salary and it's like we demand, I mean, a lot of companies squeeze you and they're Absolutely. like, we're going to make four jobs into one. Yep. And then you're like, you just made 70 million billion dollars and you wouldn't give me a raise of 20 cents. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, but the only 100%. thing is for the, for the young people, like a lot of people who like, you know, work for my friends and stuff. It's like, we had to do it. We had to put in that time. Like you work your way up, but you kind of got to like, just, it's got to be hard for a while. It does. And I think like to the point where it's like, look, especially in a startup, if you don't take care of your employees, don't have to work for you. No. And I think that the one nice thing about people not wanting to work nowadays is it forces leaders and bosses to realize that, to take better care of their mm -hmm. team because they don't have to work for you. Mm -hmm. Like it's a gift. Like when you have people that are working for you and working hard, like, People working for you is a gift, in my opinion, mm -hmm. in, in a certain way, because I think on the flip side, also, it's a gift to have a job, especially mm -hmm. in this economy. But people working for you is a gift. And then to take it a step further, people actually giving a shit about your company, mm -hmm. that's an even bigger gift. Yeah. yeah. And we were really fortunate with that at True Local. So, like, I learned real quick that, like, yeah, you do not. You just say no. 
Well, I, I don't no, know. No, I mean, that. a I, lot of your employees care. You they, you have to be likable. And you started off as friends, friends, right? I like to say my wife, Irma, you know, I always say, like, she, she was our first, the first person that we hired on the team. And, like, that woman is just, like, the most lovable person it's, on the planet. So that's, and that's she's, like, like, the heart and soul of True Local. And that is huge, right? Yeah, like, that, that's that mattered so much. It did. It mattered a lot. Because it makes people feel like they're, they're valued. That everyone wants to feel valued. And I think that, you know, the only reason I say that, also because I'm on the, that TikTok side of where they're talking about, like, what happens in other countries, how like people live to live and mm, you know, yeah. like all the, it's, it's, it's TikTok. It's a fairy tale because it's not a reality. But I think that the, we have, we have demanded so much from so many people yeah. for so long that, and now they're like, well, this is, I have one life. Like, you know, I think we have more, a better mental health is so huge. So you can't, you can't almost have it both ways. We have to like give a little, take a, like, we have to show them, no, this can be, you can have a great job. And we value you, so thank you for doing what you do. And then I bet they'll show up more. Like, there's got to be something we're missing. It well, can't don't... just be they're all like, fuck you, I'm... I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of companies that are running a lot better now. Yes. I think, like, everything is such an extreme. It's like we were saying before. Like, look, 10, 20 years ago, absolutely. You know, there are a lot of companies that, like, were predatory to their employees. Mm -hmm. You know, and the expectation of, um, you know, the hours that need to get put in. I'm not necessarily against putting in long hours, yeah. especially when you're building something. Mm -hmm. I think in a startup, it's necessary. I think in corporate, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, if you want to be a partner at a law firm, oh, if yeah. you want to, you know, kill it on uh, Wall Street or Bay Street. <laughs> it's like a 3 a.m. wake up Yeah, call. and like, listen, you, you signed up for it. Mm -hmm. That's, That's the life yeah. you signed up for. So I have no pity and I think it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. But when you have a minimum wage employee who's getting ragged on by their boss for being one minute totally. late. Yeah. Um, and you're over here being like, hey, 15 minute break, start now. Yeah. Uh, that to me is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, once again, it's these extremes. So like for the past 15, 20 years, years you have this like extreme exploitation of employees but then the pendulum swings and never stops in the middle it goes to the other yeah. side where now it's like okay you can't hire people people show up late and if you even try to say something they're like did you just harass me yeah. you or, know it's, or it's crazy are we all getting old and we're our parents generation who say who are you like know. they're so lazy that generation is so because i think the older gener every generation above has something shitty to say about the yeah. generation below like i'm sure our parents generation was like they don't even know how hard we have you know like oh yeah so sometimes when i hear like vast generalizations i'm like oh were our parents like I know. shitting for, on the younger except generation? For you, yes, totally. Except for then you see, then you you find you see those people that are gems and that really are working hard and like they do exist. You said that you used to be all about the destination and you're working yeah. on that. What does that mean? Yeah. So um, I've always been like I've never been a journeyman. Like I like the destination. Me too. So for me, I think there's a lot of good and bad in that. I think when it comes to building a company and, and trying to sell it. It's great because then anything in between the destination is just an obstacle you have to go through. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're in this constant journey that's never ending and you're like, oh my God, you know, um, if one more crazy thing happens, I got to give up. It's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I know where the destination mm -hmm. is and I am just on autopilot until I get there. Mm -hmm. And there's the benefit of you can usually achieve your goals that way. Yeah. But then there's the flip side that you kind of miss out in life that way. Hmm. You know, you do things you don't want to do. You're living a life you don't want to live because you want to get to this destination. I can see both those things in like our journey, both of those. Like yeah. that's so relatable is that we're like, nothing can stop us. But at the same time, sometimes you forget to feel what's actually happening. Yeah. So I think but it's timing. I think it's, I think it's a timing thing. So now that I've, you know, gotten this one goal in my life that I wanted to accomplish, it's kind of like, okay, well now things are different and you can do things differently. Like I don't have to, always be that guy you know at 25 to 30 I loved you know it was it was tough you know I lost a lot of friends didn't spend time with family you know like it was just a whole different person um but it that person was able to achieve this goal I wanted to achieve so now when I look at my life and you know what I want to do next a big part of it is absolutely you know doing business I can't I'm not gonna stop doing that but I'm really a big part of it now is okay we've got resources you know we've got credibility we've got a network we can put an amazing team together we can work differently you know the hardest time in true local was the first 10 years when we had to raise like a hundred thousand bucks and get 10 employees like I can start with that tomorrow mm -hmm. right so I don't have to live life in that same way but if yeah. circumstances force me to go back into that for whatever happens, then I know that that person exists. So for me now, I want to still continue to build businesses and work with cool people and do cool things. And I think about, okay, well, where do I want to be at 40? Um, I want to, I want to be, you know, more successful at 40 than I am now. And I want to, you know, the 30 year old me to look at the 40 year old me and be like, damn, that guy is sick. Like, that's me. Like, oh my God. Like, that's kind of how I like to live my life. Oh my God. Do you have, and, do you have a vision board? I don't have a vision board. It's in but his head. Yeah. My whole thing what is always. What are you wearing at 40? 
What am I wearing? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever I want. Whatever like, are I you want. are you ever in a suit or never? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I love wearing suits. Oh, you wear but like, like, like to go like, out. I look really good like, in suit. I don't know if you. Yeah. Not. No, I, I like to go out. I like to go out like to nice events and wear suits. I don't want to wear a suit to the. Oh office. yeah, and I just start like <laughs> yeah. at forty. You're like, and it like, what's like, what's like success? Like, what's success to mark at forty? Oh yeah, like I'm a financial guy. Listen, like so you know, cash I think a lot of. In the bank. I want. I just want to be able to do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it at any point in time. Like, and you I don't think, want to think about it. I don't want to think about you it. I want to, just so you know. I want to make it so that I don't have to think about taking care of life. I can just live life. And I thought that that was, you know, you saw true local and you that was great. You will always think that way. I hate to break it to you. But I don't have a problem with that because I like chasing things. So I exactly. think I'm the best version of myself when I chase I something. I think that's like 55 for you. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. think that you'll always be like, I can conquer something else. Like, I'm not sure how much you're, you'll, I think you'll always think about what what you could do more uh, and you know what i get a lot of people that criticize that and they're like yo uh, you just got to be happy and chill and do yeah. your thing and i'm like listen like i've tried that and i try enjoying it and i'm like i'm a worse version of myself okay. like i like chase at least right now the way i'm thinking right now about life i like to chase things i'm a better version of myself i become better and that might change you know yeah. i get to 40 and maybe i just want to be like you know just chill and be a monk somewhere you know i already got the head shaped for it so like <laughs> maybe i want to go and chill and i love that you want to chase like I you're like fucking it. 32 oh like if you want to sit down i think you'd be so bored no, yeah. just like an fyi i think you'd be like this is so I would, boring. I, I try to do it for sure. Like, you know, when the company just sold, like we were in Bora Bora the next day. So like yeah, literally a day later right. did that. And that was, that was a trippy trip. Cause you know, it was, it was amazing. It was the best place you can go, but like it, it didn't mentally do what both of us thought it was going to do. We thought like, okay, we're going to go on vacation. We just sold the company, went through like five years of trauma. Okay, we just sold the company. We're gonna go there, take one week to just digest it all, and then bounce about his back. Wife, by the yeah. Way. yeah, sorry. So, so okay. So, story. So, I'll get some context. So, um, I've been with my wife for you know eleven years now. Um, we just got married last year. Congratulations! Um, thank you, thank you. So, we met in university, and then started True Local, and then that was four years into us being together, and then a year into True Local, she came on, came on as our first team member, and then she's been building the company ever since. And you know, the True Local wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without her. So. Um, when we got to go to Bora Bora, we thought like, okay, cool. Like we just did this crazy thing. Now it's chill. We'll digest all of it. And then we'll figure out what's next. That took like a year of like trying to like reconcile everything that happened over that. Like, what did it all mean? Like, what, what, what was it all for? Like, what, how happy are we? You know, what, how did it affect people in our lives? Like, just like all these things that we just, we're excited to think about, but we thought we could do that in like a week. If you have kids, um, they'll kick your ass and serve your ass back to you on a platter. And then they'll sit you down. They'll make you sit down for a little while. I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I think that you told me that you want to have kids, right? We will one day. Yeah, we're yeah. not ready for them yet. Right, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we're having fun right now. Yeah, so okay, we're so enjoying, like, if you're we're looking enjoying for, like, the moment, like, to mm -hmm. being present, that will... That will help. I don't think... We're not looking for, like... I know a lot of people are like, oh, there's, there's a right moment, a wrong moment. I, I don't think we're looking for that. I mm -hmm. think what we're looking for, though, is that both of us want to wake up one day and be like... I really, really want to have a kid. Yeah. Like, that's what we want. So it's not about being ready. It's not about like, oh, are we going to be financially ready or mature no. enough? No, it's like right now we Jesus. really love our dog. So that's like one thing. <laughs> so like we're having fun with that. We travel. Like I'm driving race cars. Like I'm okay, trying so, yeah, to do business so you, stuff. So you decide like something that you love to do is you like to race. Also, don't you run like fucking, what do you do? What are those things you do? Uh, like running? Oh yeah, like, uh, I, like you mean like on like, like I go for runs? Yeah, 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 no. It's called exercise. Yeah. Exercise. No, what do you do? Like, like you break a sweat here like, on there? Yeah, you don't just run. Don't you go go do? I've done like a couple. Letter? I've done no. I've done like a couple uh, crazy runs. Um, I've done. I do like four by four by forty eight every year. Doesn't it, don't you run for like days to, or something? Yeah. So essentially, this is the David Goggins thing. And um, when we're at True Local, once again, you talk about like the toxic masculinity side of it. The benefits of it were that we were always like very competitive so it was always mm -hmm. like a lot of the dudes in the team would just want to go and just like do some crazy athletic thing together which once again some people call that toxic masculinity i call it team building with our team you know mm -hmm. so like there was all these kind of cool things that we would do that way and for me it was like okay what can we do this year this month or this quarter that's going to push us and just make us be better and i'm not a runner so i always like to like asterisk that i'm not a runner so it was like well, why don't we do this four by four by 48 which is like this uh you run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So essentially, it's like 6.6 .6 kilometers. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, was, that sounds like... It was I pretty was, miserable. I would, I'd rather I see you go... do that, and I'm like, oh, for, for, for what? Well, then, of course, so I did it the one year. So then the next year came around, I'm like, well, I can't not do it this year. And now it's like this vicious trap where I'm like, uh, every March, I'm like... I literally would rather sit at the gynecologist with my mouth <laughs> open at the dentist getting a root canal than run for 48 hours. Oh, wow. Would, Both would, at the same like time. Root, That's tough. Same time. Gonna call same this time, like all at the same time. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would do. 
40 a hours for a run. Well, you know, no, my running days are over. But you, okay, and then you race cars. What's that? Sick. It's awesome. Like, I just drive race cars. Are you gonna become like a like a race car driver for your job? I don't know what that, I don't, I honestly don't even know what that means. Like, uh, like I drive race cars. Yeah. Um, I've, I never had a car growing up and I had this obsession with like supercars. And as soon as the company, the first, actually, so before getting to Bora Bora, literally before going to flight, I bought an R8 and a What's Rolex, that? an Audi R8. So it's like okay. a, a sweet like car. A, it's like my, it's like my dream car. Yeah, it's a car. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's like my one? dream car and a Rolex. And I'm, a I'm watch. not even a watch guy. But I was just like, I have to have, I have, to have And it. you bought your dad a car and drove it to him and surprised him. I did do that. I bought my mom's house too. Oh, so all in the same it. day? Not in the same day. But Actually, really so fast. my mom's, yeah, we're pretty quick. It's, it's surprising how long it takes to make and then how quickly it leaves the bank. <laughs> I know. But um, all these things that you just have like pent up that you're like, oh my God, like I want to do this. But for my mom, actually, it was, it was, uh, it was crazy because I wanted to surprise her on her birthday and it was in April. So the company sold end of December. So um, I had the, she, it was a triplex that she lived in. Um, she's never owned a home and um, just easier to rent, you know? Yeah. And uh, the owner was the main, the main tenant. So I was like working back and forth and be like, yo, I need to do something with the house. Like, yeah, I'm gonna need this. Like, what can we do here to make it happen? And eventually we got it done, but it was before her birthday. Um, and I was still, we were in Vancouver actually at the time. So I was like, okay, like just keep collecting rent from my mom. <laughs> and like, I'm gonna come down and surprise her and let her know that like, oh, Did yo. Did she cry? Yeah. Yeah, oh, my mom's my mom's the most like this biggest sweetheart. Like she. Oh, okay, I was like, was yeah. she like, thank you, or was she like, oh, my God. I just was curious. What I, I think she was you. very surprised. She we didn't. I didn't even tell her I was coming down. So does she now have tenants and collect rent? No, from she just, just got the whole thing. No, she just, it's just, I just, I have the property and she Airport lives upstairs and yeah, just doesn't pay rent and enjoys life. You know, like I, she, she sacrificed so much for me. You know, once again, she gave up her job to raise me as a single mom. So you know, and she always had my back, and I was like, I was how like, the hell did she do that? Oh, uh, she worked from home. She, she got a different job. Yeah. So she okay. started working from home okay. um, to raise me. I cannot believe she homeschooled you because I would yeah. fail at that. Oh. Same, and so she was doing that while working. Like, no, it's just no, crazy. No, no. She did she's so a, much. She's That's a pretty, unique one too. It's pretty crazy. You can, that would have been so much, you would have watched, watched her work so hard, yeah. which is so crazy, which is probably where you get your Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think it's probably a part of that too. Yes. Like, you know, I, I can't, like, I don't look back on it and, and always look at it and be like, okay, like that's a huge part of it. But I know deep down, I'm like, okay, like just watch watching it. that happening. Like, cause at the time it's so normal, right? You just don't think it's something different. Like you mm -hmm. think everybody's mom does this mm -hmm. or you think this is the normal way of life. But after you get out and you realize you're like, oh shit, like that was, yeah, that's a hell of a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And once again, like most of the time, if not every week, there was some sort of crisis that I was going through, like getting in trouble at school or something. She so. had to handle all that by herself. She did. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So you wrote a book. I did. Yeah, that, yeah. Did What's that the book also. called? It's called True Founder. What no one else has the guts to teach you about starting your first company. Who should read that? Uh, anybody who's a first-time founder. And what I say about first-time founders is that um, it doesn't matter if you're like 10 years into your business or if you haven't started your business yet. It's kind of like you're a first-time founder until you get your first big win. So whatever that is, like when you feel like you've made it, okay, cool. Now you're past the first time founder, but this is for people oh. that are thinking about getting into business and don't really know where to start. But it's also for people that are deep in the business. So like if you were where we were at at True Local, I really wanted to write this book for those people because I think that, and the book is really about kind of like dispelling work-life balance. So circling back to this, look, I totally believe in work-life balance. I think that there's absolutely a place for it. And if you can get it, absolutely. Why wouldn't you want to do and that? It depends what you have. Exactly. Like if you have children and they're going to grow up, it might, the work life balance might need to be a, like, do you know what I mean? So it For depends sure. where you are in your cycle too, yeah. because you're never going to get your kids life back. Right. But exactly. you, you will, maybe you have time to do it and that's the time you spend on it. Well, the thought process that I had was that like, look, if you're starting a company, it's self-imposed. So you've made the decision totally. to do this, mm -hmm. which means that you have to make sacrifices to see it through. So, you know, the argument that I use in the book is that when you look at like a PhD student who sacrifices their entire life, like you want to talk about work life oh, balance, God, try being a doctor, try no. being a, mm -hmm. uh, a, try, try going to school for being a lawyer. Like no. that's actually way worse than even working at a startup. Yeah, it is so totally. You, you do that. If you look at like a pro athlete, you know, who's skipping school to mm -hmm. get in practice, mm -hmm. you praise them, right? You look at like a billboard artist who's trying to spend their rent money on studio time. Um, when you look at all that, it's all praise. Mm -hmm. It's all like, oh yeah, great. You are sacrificing everything for this dream. Mm -hmm. But when a founder does it or mm -hmm. someone does it in business, we say, oh shit, like you got to chill. Like yeah. you're working too much. Yeah, and to yeah. me, this is the biggest challenge you're taking on in your life. And yeah. so when I looked at it, I couldn't even begin to imagine a work-life balance throughout True Local. Like there was, there was nothing. It was True Local and it was everything. 
And once again, if we had failed, you know, probably a cautionary tale. But once again, I look at life and it's like the way that we did it might not work for everybody, but it definitely worked for us. So yeah. the book is all about that. It's 16 chapters. I tell my story. So kind of like how I grew up and, you know, what I believe about what I believe in purpose and all this type of stuff. So to your point, you say it's woo woo, but I don't know. I think if you really pull the onion back with a lot of people, if you don't have a belief in this woo woo stuff, like I think you're going to fight a you lot just, of weird I, I things. I just get nervous of judgment because it feels so I said I often say I feel so crazy right now. Like I literally am like, am I crazy? But they're like, no, no, no. Okay, maybe I'm in a cult and I don't know it. I'm going to wake up and be in there. And a lot of people really do, do feel that way, but sometimes they, they, they don't say it out loud, but when they really analyze the way they think, that is how it is. And then there's people who don't think that at all and that, that, that life is really challenging and really hard. Do you ever notice the people on either side of that too. Yep. So I always find that like when you get people that have found success in their life, mm -hmm. like you guys have a lot of success in your life and you're talking about this woo-woo stuff, like it's usually people that have had success that mm -hmm. are like, the world works in crazy ways, mm -hmm. whether you, and I don't even know what it is. I don't know, is it, is it religion? Is it spirituality? Is it energy? I don't know, well, but it has to, to be me, energy. I think it's energy. It has to be. I think that you're attracted to things that you're meant for. Yeah. And I think that if you're, you're meant for- If you're open to it. If, if you're you open can, to if it. you can be connected to that. What? Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, I think that because I think when people die, this is so crazy, but like your, your energy is still there, yeah. right? Like it doesn't, it can't evaporate. Mm -hmm. We all know that. And people can, you can feel energies the minute you walk in. Like that's how we stay safe because yes. you can feel an energy come in and you're like, I'm not safe right now. They yeah. don't have to say a word and you know. And I'm like, so how can that not be real? Like how can energy things not be real and universe not be real? Well, you know, and you know what people will say who don't believe it or they just, they're, they don't think it's fair to say you're just lucky. Oh, I love Always. That one. and they really I love do that think one. that. I get that one. I mean, I feel I like people one. have said that to me in my life, and when I wasn't really successful, that just you're lucky things work out for you. I'm like, yeah. I actually don't think that's it. I think it's like it's up here. It's it's yeah. like how you see how I see the world and the oh. open mindedness of like anything could if it could happen to them, it could happen to me. Did you ever doubt yourself? Um, honestly, like, like, no, <laughs> yeah, like, no, I, no, so like, I think that is a huge point. To, it's Barbie. I think it's a huge point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Maybe I, that's why I, I like know. the movie so much. Cause so like I'm Barbie. That's the way I'm like, on. I don't get mad about the movie. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm her. I literally, I was like, when we were in the movie, her, her daughter was there and her, her daughter's young. She's six, but she very Eight, much, but that's okay. Oh shit. I that happened. <laughs> um, but she's always been like, you know, like walk in the room, I'm the prettiest girl in the room, I'm the smartest, you know, but she actually, we had a conversation at lunch and she's very, she's very much, I'm not the smartest, but I'm smart. I like school. So she's really coming around in her whatever, but she really does and she's amazing. I was saying um, to Kat, I was like, I, like, I don't know where we didn't with all, all of the, like all of the things that we went through, like in our childhood, I don't know how we didn't get the three of us, I can say this for all of us, how we didn't get crushed that I we like that that we did not yeah, hear you on the podcast. No, but like, <laughs> like, when I saw, I'm like, I don't know what, what, why <clears throat> I, we didn't get crushed to not like. We really do think we're pretty great. Like, I, all of us, like, because you wake well, up. Because and you, that's you, but now you have an ego. I know. If but you think I'm you're not, so great, if you think you're great, it's like now you have an Right. Oh, right, exactly. No, like, but, you, yeah. but you know what? No, I, I know that I just think because looking... you're in line with the universe and you're okay with where you're at. If mm -hmm. you weren't, you would be judging yourself, questioning yourself, angry with something, and then the worst is angry with someone else for your life. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. if you're mad at someone for your life, mm -hmm. well, then you're real fucked. Mm -hmm. If you're blaming anybody or anything for your life, then you might as well uh, move to Bora Bora. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably won't have the money to do it. I mean, so maybe uh, <laughs> there's a lot of successful people who are pretty angry in life, right? Who... Well, and you know what? I think, like, to your, to your point, Point. Um, this idea of like you getting signs from the universe is if you believe to your point, you're like, if you're open to it and I feel like a lot of people have these crazy, you know, negative things that are happening on a regular basis. And you have people that have these crazy positive things that are happening in a regular basis. My thoughts on that is like, if you are living your journey, like whatever your, um, I don't know, whatever, I, I don't have the right words for it, but like the feeling of what I call it, destiny, whatever, if you're living your life's, you know, kind of destiny, mm -hmm. good things will happen to you. And if you compare it to other people's good things, and maybe it's negative, right? Because you're like, oh, right. this person's selling companies for a billion dollars. I'm selling, you know, you know, chocolate for 10 bucks, mm -hmm. but 
if you are living the life that you're supposed to live, you're focusing on your own goals, things that matter to you, maybe you're the person who's like, I don't actually, maybe you end up going down this life where you make a hundred million bucks, but you're like, I didn't want this. I didn't like it. And now I've lost my family, let's say. Yeah. And it's like, well, you would have been better off to selling chocolate and, you mm-hmm. know, uh, focusing on being a great, you know, you know, son, you know, daughter, you know, brother, anything like that. So I think that a lot of people, first of Chase all, Chase what they don't even know they exactly. want. They don't even want it. They just don't like that someone else has it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And mm-hmm. now, you know, they're like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. And now you're in this like crazy space spiral of like you're chasing things that you shouldn't be chasing Mm -hmm. and bad things are happening so it's just like it's i I believe in it a lot actually to the point where i don't understand why we don't teach it in schools Uh so like feelings you know i agree vibes like you know okay we teach the most random things to Mm. kids yet we don't teach like okay all you do is see with your eyes smell with your ears taste with your mouth but like why don't we talk about that gut feeling you get when some creepy person walks in the room or when the hair on the back of your neck stands up why aren't we yeah Yeah. like why aren't you listening to that tap into your tap into holy fuck we could i love this car we could talk forever oh no i'm chilling we have to no no we're gonna have to get together with him and another date 